Are you struggling to fill your back when you do your seated rows? Let's talk about it. Hey baddies, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Marina. I make videos about strength training, fat loss, and improving your relationship to food and to your body. If any of that sounds interesting to you, stick around for the rest of this video. For the longest time, I struggled to really connect with my back muscles. It didn't matter what back exercise I was doing. There was just something that I, that was missing. Like I wasn't feeling that juice that I could feel in my other movements until I learned a couple cues that I want to share with you today that really improved the quality of my mind muscle connection the pumps that I was getting in my back and it just made me feel stronger it made me feel more capable and I think it's really helped create the back that I have today which it's not that impressive but I'm proud of it huh? Huh? that's a big back ain't it technique tip number one is your hand is a hook so with any pulling movement, there's like, it's a pulling movement, right? So the goal is to pull the weight towards you. There's like a desire to emphasize your hand and like squeeze your hand really hard and like pull with your hand. And sometimes when people are doing pulling movements, I used to do this too, their hand like starts to curl because they can't pull anymore with their back. So to try to get the weight closer to their chest, they'll like start curling their hand. But this isn't gonna make, doing this isn't gonna make your back stronger, right? So your hand is simply a hook. Our wrist stays neutral and the hook attaches to the, the pulling attachment. And that leads me into tip number two. With your hand being a hook, it's not about thinking about pulling your hand towards you. You wanna think about driving with your elbow backwards. A lot of people like to use the cue of think about stuffing your elbow into the back pocket of your jeans. And that helps people for whatever reason, when I think about, when I start thinking about driving with my elbow, something just locks in place for me, for my lats. And that's been super helpful for me. So there's the first two tips. The third and fourth tip also go together, starting with tip number three. Think about maintaining a big back. Like when I'm doing pulling movements, I actually almost think about like standing up tall, flaring my lats and inviting my lats out to play. So I'm not playing small when I'm rowing. I'm thinking big, I'm sitting up tall, my chest is big, my lats are flared and I'm driving with my elbow, okay? So that's number three. Number four, this has been helping me a lot. This is up for debate though. Some people like doing it this way, some people don't. So give it a try and see how it works for you. But recently with all of the um, research that's been coming out about the benefits of like being in the stretched position for muscle hypertrophy, I really like to lean my whole body forward, dude. Like I'm trying to touch my toes when I'm coming up from the seated row. So I'm coming up, I'm getting at full stretch, like fully extending my scapula out of the socket, literally feeling the muscle fibers in my back stretch. And that almost like pre-bigs your back. Does that make sense? We're not trying to unbig our backs here. We're trying to big our backs here, okay? So that stretch at the top kind of helps you pull your lats apart and feel what it feels like to pull your muscles apart and maintaining that big position when you're driving your elbows back feels easier, at least for me. So you can do the seated row more upright and not with that dramatic forward lean, but I don't know, dude, something about that dramatic forward lean has really been doing things for me lately. Give it a try and let me know what you think. Tip number five, I'm calling motion of the ocean, baby. I find that I feel a better connection with my back and I feel stronger and more capable when I have a certain controlled swing going on with my seated rows, right? So I'm not like fucking throwing myself back and forth and using momentum to move the weight. It's a controlled swing. It's almost like a controlled cheating. So I'm leaning forward at the top of the movement, feeling that full stretch in my back. And then I'm sitting up, standing up, opening my chest to row backwards. Tip number six. I kind of already hinted at this a little bit when I was talking about the motion of the ocean, but just like with any exercise ever, we want to go slow and controlled. For seated rows or anything back related specifically, you know what I love to do? I love a slow eccentric. So when you're letting the weight go, I like slowly 
with control let go instead of just like letting my body like hurl forward. Does that make sense? And I feel the stretch in my back. I fuck, I take my time, bro. And I milk that stretch before I then explode with my concentric. That feels really juicy for me. Try that out and see how that feels. So those were the big technique tips. If you're going slow and controlled, you're using a weight that you can manage and you're focusing on the stretch and you're focusing on driving your elbows and really feeling your back, that should do it for you. Also, just be mindful that mind-muscle connection is something that strengthens over time. So dude, for like the first two years of my lifting journey when I was still learning how to feel my back, the mind muscle that I had then doesn't come close to the mind muscle that I have now. So sometimes there are days for sure where my mind muscle connection isn't as good. I don't let that completely fuck with my head. You know what I mean? I just trust that if I'm doing the exercises with intention and with good form, good technique, good tempo, I'm most likely targeting my back. Some days we have better mind muscle days than others. And then just with time, as well as we mature and we grow more muscle fibers, that mind-muscle connection definitely strengthens. So keep practicing. If you don't, even if your mind-muscle, you don't get it immediately, keep practicing, keep trying different back exercises until you find the one that helps you feel it, feel the best connection to your back. And we're gonna talk about that in this next part of the video. Great segue, now that we've discussed the seven basic tips that I have for you, let's dis discuss modifications that you can employ that can help you tweak your seated row to best fit your anatomy, your unique preferences. Let's get it. So modification number one, try adding partials at the end of your set. So this is less of a modification and more of an intensification technique, like a way that you can make your seated rows, like you can milk the most out of them. If you're trying to train insane, give this intensification technique a try. It's basically where you go full range of motion as much as you can, and then when you start failing, don't stop. Keep going, and even though you can't get your elbow all the way back and get that full contraction of the lat, you can at least stay and do a couple partials to milk out some more tearing and damage to the muscle. With all the research coming out with like the benefits of training and the lengthened portion of the muscle, I've been applying partials and they've been feeling really juicy and I literally go until I can't go anymore. Give that a try and let me know how that goes for you. Modification number two. There are a million and one ways that you can load a seated row. You can do it with a cable, you can do it on a machine, do it on a chest supported machine. So if for whatever reason I show up to the gym and the cable seated row that I usually do is taken, or I don't really feel a good connection with the cable seated row, no worries, maybe I try a chest supported row. And that segues us into modification number three. Where do I put my hands? What handle am I using? Like neutral grip, overhand grip, underhand grip, wide grip, close grip. Pick a grip and stick with it and see what grips allow you to feel the best connection with your back. Maybe I'll do like one exercise that targets more upper back and then I'll do one variation that targets more lats. So when I do seated rows, I really love doing a cable seated row with a close grip attachment. I like that it's a neutral attachment. So my wrists, and I don't know, it just feels the most comfortable on my wrists and it allows me to feel the best connection with my lats. But you can also do like a slight underhand or you can do a slight overhand one. You can do a mid grip, you can do a wide grip. In my experience, a wide overhand grip forces you to have to row a little bit higher and you'll probably feel more of your upper and mid back when you're doing a higher row. And then to target my lats, I'll do a low row. It just depends where you wanna feel it and it depends what grip suits you best. And then another thing to keep in mind, sometimes you'll do a certain grip or a certain variation for a really long time and it really works for you for a while. And then one day it just stops working or for a while you really hated doing this one variation and then one day you try it again and then suddenly it feels really juicy. So just that's another thing to keep in mind. We're constantly evolving. The important thing here is pick a grip, stick with it, 
Hopefully pick one that allows you to feel good mind-muscle connection. Hopefully pick one that allows you to progress over time and you're most likely doing something correct. And this is our last modification. If you have tiny hands, I don't have that problem. I have a big ass hand, but I have a lot of clients where their forearms when they're doing pulling movements will be on fire or their hands will keep slipping off and they'll be like, coach, my lats weren't even fatigued. It was my forearms and, and my grip that was hurting. Consider trying a lifting strap or try using this thing called a Versa grip to get a better grip and see if that helps you not have to focus so much on your grip so that you can keep hammering your lats. The last thing I'm gonna leave you with, if you've seen enough of my form demo videos, you've heard me say this before, none of this shit matters, okay? If you are not training hard, you're training one to three reps shy of failure, none of this matters if you're not progressing over time. Every week or so, we should be going up in reps. Every couple months or so, we should be going up in weight. Obviously, if you're a noob, you're gonna be going up in weight and reps more aggressively. But if you're approaching the intermediate area like me, it becomes harder and harder to progress every week. So that's when we really have to lean on training hard, training one to two reps shy of failure, and the numbers will come up with time. So even if after a while you're not going up in reps every single week, as long as we're going up in reps or in weight every month or so, you're most likely on the right track. All of that to say, train insane, don't train like a pussy. Actually push yourself and actually take notes so that you can ensure that you're improving with time, that your mind-muscle connection is improving with time as well. So try some of these tips on for size, try some of the different modifications, see what works for you and your unique body. Don't just copy what you see people on fucking social media doing. You can obviously try stuff that other people are doing, but the, the key word here is try it. See if it works for you. And don't be afraid to change things up if it feels weird or the mind-muscle connection isn't there or it's uncomfortable. But that's it, queens. Oh my God. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below what you thought, some big takeaways that you had, or some other tips and modifications that you have in mind that maybe I looked over or didn't mention. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.